Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the solution to the DAX problem that I gave you in the last video. Now, I do understand that was a tricky problem to solve. In this video, I'll try to build a conceptual level understanding of how do you solve such tricky problems using DAX. We're going to start with building some patchy and rough work in Excel and then try to copy that same logic using DAX. Let's just start with some patchy work and get this going. All right, so I'm in the Excel file that contains the data. I will quickly run through the problem once again and then try to build up a solution using pivot tables in Excel using some rough work as well. So in this data, one single transaction means one single instance of money collected from the customer and the customer can only pay you once per product per month. And our job was to find how many upgrades are happening every single month. Upgrade simply means that if I'm on the base version of the product and I move to the professional version of the product, that is considered as an upgrade. Let's just create a few pivot tables and try to manually find out that how many upgrades are happening. To be able to solve this on another sheet, I have made two pivot tables, which is a very standard pivot table. I have the years, I have the month, I have the name of the product, the version of the product and the user ID. Now, since I know for sure that there is an upgrade that happened in the month of August since I designed the data, let's go take a look at if any upgrades happened in the month of August. To be able to find an upgrade, I need to compare the month of August with the month of July and take a look, has any user moved from the basic version to the professional version of the product or not? The first pivot table is going to be for July for sure and I'll apply a filter and I'll say, hey, why don't you filter for July? say okay and since the user can move from the basic version to the professional version i also need to apply a filter that only take a look at the basic version of the product in the month of july so i'll just maybe apply a filter so i'm only taking a look at basic version users in the month of july let's apply another set of filters to a new pivot table and since i'm trying to compare it against august i will apply a filter for august say okay and another filter for the professional version so say okay now if there are any users between between these two pivot tables which are common they are clearly upgrades so let's just take a look at this pivot table the basic users in the month of July 97 39 and 96 do we have any of these three in this pivot table or not so we clearly see that the first user is 39 he was there on the basic version of the product for this product he was there on the basic version and then he changed the basic version in the month of August to the professional version of the product that is going to be considered as an upgrade now how do I build such logic in Power BI using a tax measure. Now for sure I actually would need to create two separate tables that take a look at the current month professional uh, version and then that take a look at the previous month but the base version. If I'm able to build these two tables I would be able to solve the problem just by comparing the number of rows there are and if I have any matching customers in these two pivot tables those are the number of upgrades. Let's just go solve this using Power BI and DAX. All right, so I'm in Power BI and I have taken the data from Excel and I've put that data right here into my Power BI file. And I've also created a very simple relationship between the two tables, the data table, which is containing the data, linked to my calendar table, the date column right here. And I've created a very simple month year concatenation field right here. And against every single month and every single year, I want to find the number of upgrades. I'm going to follow the same logic, find out the number of users who were there on the base version, compare those users to the professional version of the product in the current month, see if there are any common users. And that is is nothing but the count of the upgrades. I'm going to start writing a measure. Now, there is going to be one problem which I want to talk about right at the start. So once I'm start writing a measure against the month, I'm actually taking a look at the entire data, the transactional data against a particular month. Now, I don't really want to take a look at the transactional data. I want to summarize the data by the product, by the user, so that I can compare all the users of the product, the base users, to the professional users. So I'm going to start with writing a summarize function so that I don't take a look at the exact transactional data. I take a look at the summarized data. So I'm going to use the summarize function and I'm going to say that, hey, why don't you summarize the data and summarize that data by the user ID and summarize that data by the product. Now, remember that we want to compare the two tables, the base version table, the people who are on the base version to the people who are on the professional version. The first table is going to be of the users who are on the base version. So I'm going to say, hey, why don't you create this table, which is a summary table of the users of the particular product. But this table is going to be for only those people who are on the base version. So I'm going to say the version of the product 
is going to be the base version that completes one condition now this is not the only condition i want to take a look at the base version not of the current month i want to take a look at the base version of the previous month so i'm going to add a condition here and call this for the previous month so previous month of the calendar date close that close that now that dax is going to give us a table it's not going to give you a single value if i commit to this formula and drag it into my pivot table i'm going to get an error because this gives you a full table how do i get to know that this is giving me the right output or at least i can test it in some way i'm going to actually wrap this around the count rows function that at least give me the count of number of rows that you get so i'm just going to do a count rows of this particular table close that bracket and start to drag this into my pivot table so i'll drag it let's just go take a look at the month of august so against august it says the number 3 it's trying to say that in the month of august if i compare the data of july in the month of july there were three people on the basic version of the product that's what this 3 means let's just go test that out in excel all right so you can see that in the month of july on the base version there were three people seems like that we are on the right track let's just go try to build that solution further okay now that we have built the number of users who were there in the previous month on the base version let's just try to build the number of users who are there in the current month but on the professional version of the product so i'm just going to get rid of this count rows for now and give this table a variable so i'm just going to call this as a base version table last month and then declare another variable of professional version table current month and i'm going to use the very same formula so i'll just maybe copy that particular formula and i'll say that hey i still want to calculate the summarize table by the user id and by the product but the data version is going to be the professional version and i do not really want to kind of take this back to the previous month the professional version is going to be against the current filter or the current month i'll actually remove this particular thing and i'll just remove the comma as well now how do i get to know that this output again is correct the second table is also correct so i'm actually going to do a little return here and say that why don't you actually count the number of rows in the second table that i have created which is the professional v table current month I'm just going to press enter and let's just go take a look at how many users are on the professional version of the product in the current month. So against the month of August it actually gives me the answer as 2. Let's just go vet that in Excel. It actually gives me the output as 2 which is absolutely correct. Now let's just go back and try to build our solution further. All right, now that we have the two tables with us, the last month base version table and the current month professional version table, all that I really want to do is compare the two tables and i want to see that how many users are common between the two tables the number of users common between the two tables is going to be nothing but the number of upgrades that i have every single month so how do i do that i'm actually going to write a function called the intersect function so i'm just going to write here intersect if you take a look at the intersect function it actually asks you for two inputs the left side table and the right side table it will return the rows of the left side table which appear on the right side table the common rows between the two tables and that are appearing in both the tables it's actually going to return that so that's actually pretty cool so i'm just going to say that here is a table of the last month and the basic users and here is another table which are the professional version of the people in the current month why don't you actually count the number of rows in these two tables which are common and give me the output so i'm just going to wrap this around the count rows function and close that bracket and press enter now what i get is the number of people who are common between the two tables and that is nothing but the count of upgrades so you can see that against the month of august i get one which is also the answer that i actually took a look at in my excel now all of this is cool if you were able to do this much using dax i would have given you 100 points absolutely correct but this is an incomplete solution because we don't have the totals as of yet because at the total level there is no previous month and we would not be able to do the calculation by such method so there is a whole new level of work that we'll have to do if we really want to do the calculation for the total as well and actually total all of these individual numbers across the months and total it up and put it right here so let's just go to dax studio and physically take a look at how the query is going to be structured so that we are able to get the correct totals and put that right here All right so I'm in Dax Studio and this is where I'll start to build my Dax further and I'll try to come up with an answer that works just fine at the month level as well and as well as the year level. If you recall that we were able to produce the answer at the month level but not really at the year level. Now I want to write a Dax in such a way that it works just fine at the month level as well as the year level. And the reason why I'm working in Dax Studio is because you'll be able to take a look at the data that gets processed and also under the hood as to how the Dax is working. So why don't we actually start writing a very simple 
simple query and let's just take it from there. So I'm just going to write the evaluate here and just say evaluate my entire data and I'm just going to say run and a table gets generated here which gives me the entire data. When you're working at the ear level, this is the data that Power BI actually sees. It sees the entire data without any month or year level filters. Now, uh, what I want to do is I don't want to work with the entire data. I want to work with always a summarized data, which is summarized by the year, by the month, by the product and by the user, because that is where my calculations will start to happen. My business model is collecting monthly money from the customer. And I want to summarize the data by the year, by the month, by the product and by the user. Let's just do that to begin with. So I'm just going to maybe wrap this around in the summarize function. In the summarize function, I'm going to say that summarize this data by the year so calendar year month that is the year and the month combination and i'm going to say hey why don't you also summarize this data by the product and also summarize this data by the user id and close that summarize function format that tax and let's just run the query now what we should get is the summarized data by the month year by the product and by the user id and that's the entire data that i'd like to work with now let's just build this further what I want to do is now is I want to add a column here and I want to mark every single user that were you on the basic version of the product in the last month or not. If you were on the basic version of the product, maybe I want to write like a flag, like a one here or something like that. I want to do that, right? So let's just start with that and let's just build further. So what I'm going to do is in order to add a column to this particular table, I'm going to use the add columns function. And I'm going to say, hey, in this table, I'd like to add a column. The column that I want to add, the name of the column is going to be base or not. Is that person on the basic version or not in the last month? And to be able to calculate this answer, I'm actually going to use the same DAX formula that I used a while ago when I was working in Power BI to be able to find the user was in the basic version or not. So I'm going to use the calculate table. And I'm going to say calculate table. I would like to summarize the data, summarize my data by the product and also by the user ID. Now, the problem is that once I kind of commit to this formula and I start to run this formula, this formula is going to give me an error because you really cannot feed an entire table here. Calculate tables returns you a table and the entire table cannot be in the single cell. All that I want to do is I just want to count the number of rows in this table. This table is yet not complete. This table is just summarizing the data, but the summarization of the data should happen for the basic version of the product for the last month. So I'm just going to quickly add two more conditions here that the month should be the previous month. So previous month calendar date and the version of the product should be equal to the base version. Now to make this happen, I'm just going to wrap the entire function around the count rows function function and I will then calculate this particular query and let's just see what do we get as an output. So I'm just going to click on run and let's just see what do we have as an output here. So as an output, I get to see a one against every single user that was on the basic version of the product in the last month. This is so far so good. Now I want to create another column and I want to see all the users that are on the professional version of the product in the current month. And I will use the same DAX logic that I just did it in Power BI. So I'm just going to maybe add another column right here and I'm just going to say professional or not. And I'm going to use the same, very same formula. So control C to copy that. I'm just going to come at the bottom and paste that right here. And I don't really want to go to the previous month. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And the version is not going to be the base version, but it's going to be the professional version. Rest everything remains the same. And I'm just going to quickly format this and run my DAX. And you can see that I have now created another column here, which is where I get to see the professional version of the product. If that user is in the professional version of the product in the current month or not. Now, what do I check? Let's just take a look at any particular user that has a one in both the columns. That means that is nothing but an upgrade. So let's just maybe go to the month of August and let's just take a look at our user. So this particular user, which is 639, which was also the case in Excel, was there on the basic version in the last month and then he upgraded to the professional version in the current month. Now, all that I want to do is I don't really want to create these two columns. These two columns uh, are nothing but the rows and I want to kind of intersect these rows and find out the common values between these two rows. That means if you have a one and one, these are the common values. I really want to pick up these two common values and count the number of rows there are. So all that I will do is the same thing that I have done the intersect function in the DAX measure, but this time I'll do it in the query and build a measure then back into Power BI.
Okay, so I really don't want to have two columns displayed here, base or not and pro or not. I really want to have just one column displayed here as an upgrade column. If both of these columns show a one, that means the customer has upgraded and I just write one here. Otherwise, I'll just leave it out as blank. And that's something that I'd like to do. I have all the code that I need. Let's just modify the code slightly and get that column that I need. So I'm in the add columns tab, I'm just gonna create a new column and call that column as upgrade. And in that column, I will declare two variables. So variable number one is going to be the list of customers who were on the base version in the last month. I already have the code for that. Let's just declare a variable. So base last month is my variable and that calculate table is going to give me the list of all the customers who were there on the basic version of the product in the last month note that this actually gives me a table doesn't give me a single one all right now let's just declare another variable and i'm just going to say that hey this is going to be var and this is going to be pro current month and i'm just going to get rid of that get rid of that and again declare a variable here and that is going to be the list of the customers who are on the professional version of the product in the current month. Now, once I have declared these two variables, all that I want to do is I want to have the return statement and then I will just do an intersect between the two tables and get my results. So I'm just going to write the return and I'm just going to say intersect and I'm going to say there are two tables that I want to intersect. The first table is the base table based last month and the second table is the pro current month close that bracket and intersect is again going to give me a table and I just want to count the number of rows in that. So I'm just going to wrap that around the count rows function and of course close my add columns. I'm just going to format my DAX, run the DAX and let's just see what we get. Now we have a single upgrade column and in that upgrade column, I'm just gonna have a one wherever there was a one mentioned against the two columns that I had created earlier, which is nothing but this particular value, which is you can take a look at that. In the month of August, there was just one upgrade and that is what we get here. What I'm going to do now is this tax actually gives me a full table with four columns, the month and the year, the product, the user ID, and the upgrade. And if I just take a total of the upgrade, I think I have just solved the problem. So I'm just gonna copy this entire DAX and just go back to Power BI and modify my calculation so that I get the total calculation as well as the month level calculation. So control C here, back in Power BI, the number of upgrades is going to be a new calculation now, which is this calculation, which I've just copy pasted from uh, my query editor. And I'm gonna wrap this around in the SUMX function. And I'm gonna say this gives me a table. In this table, I have a column named upgrade. Why don't you take a total of that upgrade column? And I'm just gonna say upgrade total. And I'm just gonna close that, press enter. This gives me a single value output and that goes inside my table and I get the correct value against all these months. All right, the fun part is that this entire solution is sliceable by any of the columns which are there in my table. So if I maybe just uh, get the name of the product and put it out as a slicer, if I actually click on any single product, I will get to see the upgrades of only that particular product and that particular product right here. So 32 upgrades here and 39 upgrades here, which makes it a total of 71 upgrades. I can also get the name of the user and I can also find out which user exactly upgraded from the basic to the professional version. So if I just maybe get the user email and drag that measure all across here, and the user that we have been trying to track all the way through this video, which is nothing but the user who upgraded in the month of August, if I click on August, I will get to see the very user who upgraded from the basic version to the professional version of this little product. All right, that was a long answer to the short question that I asked you in the last video. Now I do understand this was a pretty tricky problem to solve, but if you are trying to perform any reconciliation likes checks, compare the current month with the last month, find out the new users, find out the upgrades or any of such patterns, you can actually use this particular tax pattern. And a big shout out to everybody who participated in this challenge. We had Neelesh who participated, we had Jijo who participated once again, Anurag also participated. Thank you so much guys for putting in your hard work and your mind to solve this problem. And especially for beginners who are just starting out with DAX, this was certainly not the problem that you would wanna have as the first problem to solve. So if you want help to learn DAX right from scratch and build up to a level where you start solving more challenging, more difficult problems, more real-time problems with your own data, I suggest that you take a look at my DAX course. It's gonna be highly beneficial to learn DAX right from scratch. And of course, let me know if you have any questions around this. I'll be glad to help. Thank you so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.